Hi, hello, uh, welcome to Digital Storytelling. Today we are going to talk about cutscenes, dialogues, and animation in narrative. Time and pace are probably the most important mechanism of storytelling. How much time are we uh, taking a look to an object in a movie? How much uh, time are we listening to music? How much time of silence? How much time of dialogues? How much time the whole experience? Whatever we design is always uh, taking time of our uses. And time is probably one of the most important data in all kinds of design. Whatever we want to de differentiate between a pleasant or an unpleasant product, it might have to do with time. The frustration, for example, that a product uh, uh, elicits is going to be directly related to the time in doing some tasks or the time of delay, the time waiting for the product to offer the expected result. But when we are talking about interactive products, time is more difficult to measure. This is not like a movie. It's not going to be one hour and 30 minutes of our work. No, it's going to be some time of experience is going to be uh, completed by the user is it going to be uh, segmented in different times of the life of the user is it going to be repeated experience so obviously time is not going to be uh, representing faithfully so when we talk about uh, time uh, a traditional distinction is real time versus term based okay and in visual novels, for example, we are going to face many times the uh, possibility of suspending the narration or maybe repeating the sentence or maybe, uh, you know, just spending some time trying to read the content of that page. Exactly like a comic book, you might think uh, there is not really a stopwatch when you are reading a novel or when you are reading a comic book, or when you are reading a magazine. You just spend the time you want in each part of the uh, story. And this is uh, similar. Real time would be other kinds of experiences, okay? Experiences where we are expected to react to uh, things happening on the screen of our device. As it happens with everything, pacing and time are going to depend on the genre. Think, for example, in what it happens when you have a game with a, a tutorial level and how much time you can spend uh, learning how to do something and you really want to start playing. But that has been in the last uh, years, this has been uh, replaced by uh, direct uh, training or direct, you know, gaming with storylines and all this. So the people can start playing from the first minute okay or for example this is from uh, walking dead the series and how that would work as a graphic adventure and this is just a fun art thing but it's very interesting to think about this in terms of genre when you change the genre obviously you change the goals of the experience and in this case you will have more kind of a puzzle uh, directed story and obviously probably not that important to react you know uh, real time so it is not going to be that important to run away from the zombies or to kill them all it might be more important to uh, use different objects and sort out different puzzles so the goals of the genre have been uh, set up in a different way And of course, as commented before, uh, time is changing when you can uh, record the game and just play it, you know, carry on with the playing or with the story any other moment. In total honesty, uh, saving the game sometimes is a way of cheating because it allows us to uh, repeat different options, you know, explore different options, and uh, that might have consequences in terms of the storytelling. When the storytelling is not uh, conducted by the pleasure of uh, knowing about a story, but with the motivation of achieving certain elements or certain status, then it seems that the story 
is the is becoming a game more than a story okay so we have again these components of narrative and game that are always embedded and always uh, you know uh, relating to each other dialogues and cut the scenes are these uh, elements as we know that just interrupt the gameplay interrupt the experience of uh, playing or uh, you know reacting to certain uh, things on certain time different skills that we use in games and in during those uh, scenes during those uh, moments we only need to pay attention we only need to spend time so that is why obviously dialogues and cut scenes are basic in order to set the pace of the experience different kinds of uh, uh, cut scenes could be video cut scenes things that have been pre-recorded interactive cut scenes where you can do some things but are not really uh, uh, they are constrained by the the scenario they are constrained by the action so you can just you know touch some buttons or somehow alleviate the stress of having to wait for doing something more commonly nowadays the real-time cutscenes okay they are rendered on the fly using the game engine this are uh, very useful to not uh, present a different kind of visual style or you know uh, uh, approach just get out you from the uh, immersion of uh, previously established by the game and then you have the script sequence okay those that don't interrupt interactivity so for example uh, when you uh, tell your character to move or when you uh, for example uh, just uh, go to the next page of a book you might have a small animation and that small animation is a script sequence it's uh, so short that it's not really going to interrupt interactivity it's more kind of a consequence a, a feedback of the uh, constant interaction with the uh, digital object cut scenes uh, obviously usually have a narrative significance okay like for example when you have an introduction or the results the rewards of uh, of the game experience so sometimes uh, especially in the old times uh, uh, the most sophisticated graphics, the music, all these kind of elements were at the end of the game as a way of rewarding the user for the uh, for the time spent. So the ways uh, of considering cut scenes, you have um, these different uh, elements. For example, the quick time events. Okay, uh, these are basically forms of a script events, but they are gamified. So depending on your uh, skills, you might be able to uh, sort out the situation in a way or another. There will be animations associated to that. I think a very good example of this would be God of War or the series of games God of War. And remember, we have talked about writing dialogues and what is the role of the writer. It is important to understand that there will be always the need to find a balance between uh, you know long sequence of dialogues and the choices okay where the action of the character has to do with dialogue and when they are the role of the user has to do with reading we have talked about dialogue systems uh, using fungus and other game engines last week so i'm just going to refresh some of these elements but I think it's important to understand the, uh, the way this interacts with time. Okay, are we going to pre-record dialogues? Are we going to uh, select a dialogue option and then reproduce that dialogue as it is? Are we going to try to avoid redundancy but not presenting twice the same text but the same idea? Okay, there are different strategies and we need to explore those. A classical example of this was uh, Knights of the Old Republic, a game published in 2003. Obviously, dialogue will have always elements uh, that are related to concept of the story. If two ideas in the story are uh, resorting, uh, if the two main concepts of the story or the strategies of the character are confrontation, I mean, 
physical confrontation versus uh, intellectual uh, discussion, then you will have uh, the typical very polemic, uh, very polarized situation uh, where you have a dialogue that is going to look for confrontation and a dialogue that is going to look for negotiation. Okay, so the character that is going to be depends on the on the user actions. Cut scenes are basically setting the mood and the style of the whole experience. Okay, are they going to be fun? Are they going to be creepy? Are they going to be uh, tender? What do you want to create with your uh, visual novel, with your different products? That would literally affect the way you uh, translate that into graphics, music, sound, and different other forms of non-interactive sequences. I have allocated in this slide, uh, and I would like you to explore the different uh, evolution of the um, this saga, which I think is a very interesting case of uh, storytelling, which is the Gabriel Knight. Uh, Gabriel Knight was a popular character uh, in uh, in the 90s. Uh, the game is basically a graphic adventure, but you can see it's from the first to the second and the third uh, installment of the of, of the series. Uh, different products, you will see an evolution in terms of graphics and in terms of the different technologies involved. So, for example, you have uh, the first one, which is clearly a graphic adventure in the um, style of Sierra and uh, to some extent to uh, LucasArts. Then you have this experiment using a, a full motion video, kind of the style of Phantas Phantasmagoria. Okay, so using a, a CD quality audio, uh, you know, photorealistic uh, elements. In the third uh, of the video games of this saga, you have the use of um, 3D characters and 3D uh, engines. Okay, just as commented before, using the same quality and the same graphics of the you know, whole gameplay. Another aspect important to comment in relation to cut the scenes are uh, how cut the scenes can be a perfect example of what we call uh, in media studies remediation. Cut the scenes can use, for example, illustration or comic books as a kind of uh, language, but only uh, adapted to the you know, dynamics of the multimedia products. So you can have, for example, the use of panels or the use of a uh, dialogue, uh, you know, um, uh, different panels, okay? So uh, you will have as well uh, some other examples. You will have as well some other examples of animation or a change of style just maybe to emphasize, uh, you know, uh, different feelings, different, uh, you know, sometimes parodies or sometimes just adopting another mode, another style in order to emphasize, you know, the strangeness and of, you know, that moment. And that's, that's quite uh, interesting to see in products that are clearly uh, comedies. Like, for example, this game, The Secret of Monkey Island. Have a look at the video. This is one of these examples I commented about uh, the use of comic books. In this case, a comic book that is more kind of a, a photo uh, visual novel. Okay, uh, a very particular kind of comic book using, you know, uh, uh, pictures uh, that are, you know, bashing that are adapted to the uh, comic book format. Remember, if you use uh, Fungus or any other similar engine, you might have uh, the possibility of adding sound and adding, uh, you know, dialogues. Uh, and that is an important key uh, in terms of uh, manipulating the pace and the whole t time of the experience. Okay. Of course, animations as well. 
you want to do animations in Fungus, you are going to use uh, the motto that is inside Unity. Okay, you can also create animations outside uh, Unity and then just play them. There are commands related to play. Probably it would be better in terms of performance to do it within uh, Unity. I allocated here some resources in case you want to learn how to do this. Uh, today we have talked about uh, contextualized, uh, you know, cat scenes within adventure games, uh, with the visual novels, interactive movies, all these kind of products. We have examined, uh, we have explored examples of main animation techniques, uh, dialogues and cat scenes uh, within all this group of text. As always, I recommend some uh, directed work okay uh, consisting in different activities but uh, in this particular case i think you should focus on the use of your uh, prototype uh, engine so i would only would only suggest you to work with your prototyping tool and uh, try to do all the exercise that we have done so far and all the explorations needed in order to master all the different uh, features of these, uh, you know, uh, prototyping tools. Some interesting reading in terms of uh, writing and controlling time for video games are also part of the reading list of this module. And that's all for today. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your attention and take care.